Hi right, boys and girls, we're back and this is exam review number five. Can you believe we're more than halfway through the year now? Um, this of course is going to cover mainly reaction types, uh, being able to write formulas, uh, being able to balance equations and do stoichiometry, and there is some kinetic theory on this exam also. So please don't forget to review that section of your notes and we'll hit that at the end of this review probably in part two. So let's just jump right into it, folks. Uh, on our review sheet, question number one here says, uh, liquid bromine reacts with solid phosphorus to produce solid diphosphorus pentabromide. Now, don't worry too much about the phases at this point. Uh, bromine, you should know, is one of your Brinkelhoff uh, elements. That means it's a diatomic element. So you should write it as Br2. Br is never by itself. It's always bonded to another atom or to itself. And let's see, it's solid phosphorus, so that's P4, that's elemental phosphorus. And it says we make uh, diphosphorus pentabromide. So diphosphorus, di means you have two phosphoruses. Pentabromide, uh, so Br5, the penta is the five bromines. So we should be able to balance this one pretty quickly. Let me put a two in front of the diphosphorus pentabromide. And we will put, uh, we'll leave P4 alone because we have four phosphoruses now on both sides. And a 5 in front of Br2. That gives me uh, 10 bromines on each side. So by the way, this would be a synthesis reaction. We have two elements combining to form a compound. Uh, number 2, aqueous lead 2 nitrate reacts with aqueous potassium iodide to produce solid lead 2 iodide in aqueous potassium nitrate. Once again, don't worry about the phases. Aqueous just refers to the fact that these uh, ionic compounds are dissolved in water. So lead 2 nitrate, let's think about that for a minute. Lead 2 means it's lead 2 plus. Nitrate's one of your polyatomics. So we can look that one up pretty quickly. Let's see, nitrate right there, NO3, negative 1. Okay, so lead 2 nitrate would be Pb, and it looks like we're going to need two of those nitrates to balance out the two positive of my lead. So Pb, NO3 in parentheses 2, plus, see it's reacting with potassium iodide. So potassium, K+, plus, it's in group 1 kiddos. And iodide, I, is in group 17, so that's one negative. Just a quick, quick refresher on that. Potassium's in group 1, remember they're all positive 1. Iodide's in group 17, they're all negative 1 when they form ionic bonds. So K plus and I negative, we need one of each, Ki. Reacts to form, solid lead 2 iodide. Now this, by the way, is a nice uh, point to review. This is a double uh, displacement reaction. Lead and potassium are going to switch partners. So lead will get together with iodide to form my lead to iodide. So Pb is 2 plus, iodide is 1 negative, we're going to form Pb I2. Two. two negatives to balance out my 2 positive from the lead. And then the potassium will get together with the nitrate. Potassium is 1 plus, nitrate is 1 negative, so just one of each will work. KNO3. Let's balance this. We have two iodines on this side, so I'll put a 2 in front of Ki, put a 2 in front of KNO3, and we have two nitrates. Yep, we're squared away. So number 2 is finished. Okay? Now, uh, number 3, we're going to have to predict the products, balance the equation, and classify it as to reaction type. So on number 3, we have aluminum metal and copper 2 sulfate. Now this is called a single displacement reaction where the aluminum and the copper will switch partners. So copper is going to be by itself just as aluminum was a moment ago and aluminum will get together with sulfate. Now remember folks, aluminum is 3 plus when it forms a bond and sulfate, SO4, let's find that quickly, sulfate, here we go, is SO4, 2 negative. So let's do this off to the side. Aluminum, we said, was 3 plus. Sulfate is 2 negative. So 3 plus and 2 negative. Let's see, if I have two aluminums, that gets me to 6 positive. And if I have three sulfates, that gets me to 6 negative. So the sum of the charge of an ionic compound is 0. Let's see, let's balance this. Um, let's put a, th let's see what we're going to do here. Put a 3 in front of the 
copper sulfate to give me three sulfate, sulfates on both sides. Three in front of the copper and a two in front of the aluminum. Okay, once again, that is single displacement. Okay, number four is a double displacement reaction. So the positives are going to switch partners. So Al will get together with Cl and H will get together with OH. So let's do the Al and the Cl first. Remember we just said aluminum is 3 plus. Chlorine is in group 17. So they're all one negative when they form an ionic bond. So we're going to form AlCl3, right? Three negatives to balance out my three positive. And what happens when H and OH get together? Well, let's do that off to the side as well. Um, H is positive one. OH is hydroxide. That's negative one. Let me quickly show you where I got those. Hydrogen, positive one. And hydroxide, let's take a look over here on this paper. Hydroxide, here we go. Hydroxide OH negative one. So H plus and OH negative form HOH. Now we normally write that as H2O. But if you want to write it as HOH, that's fine with me. Okay? All right. Let's see what we need to do to balance this. We have uh, three chlorines here. We only have one here. Let's go ahead and double up on this. And then we'll give us a six in front of HCl. See what that does for us. Oh, you know what? I messed up, but we'll continue with this so I don't have to start over again. That gives us 6 plus 12. Oh, so I'll put a 6 there. In reality, this should be 1, 3, 1, 3. That would have balanced it just fine. Sorry, my mistake. Okay, once again, that was double displacement. Okay, number 5. We have molybdenum and oxygen. Now, this is a synthesis reaction. So molybdenum, I tell you in the paper to use molybdenum, 6 plus. And when oxygen forms an ionic bond with molybdenum, remember oxygen is in group 16. Group 16, they're 2 negative. So we're going to have some O2 negative. So we have to come up with that formula. Let's see, 6 plus and 2 negative. MOO3 should do it, shouldn't it? That'll work. So we're going to form MOO3. So molybdenum 6 oxide is the name of that compound. Put a 2 here, 3 there, and a 2 there to balance that equation. That was synthesis. And the last one um, for this group is number 6. We have um, ethene, C2H4, and oxygen. Now when you see a hydrocarbon or a carbohydrate, that means it has C, H, and O, as opposed to just C and H reacting with oxygen, we call these combustion reactions. And the products are always going to be CO2 and water. Now remember that from your notes, we did a review sheet. We did uh, two or three of those on that paper, so just go back and review that if you've forgotten. So um, C2H4 and oxygen will make carbon dioxide and water. Let's put a two here to give me two carbons on both sides. 2 here to give me 4 hydrogens on both sides. That gives me 4 plus 2 is 6. Put a 3 in front of the O2 to give me 6 oxygens on both sides. Okay, that was a combustion reaction. So on the exam, kiddos, be prepared to be able to write formulas, um, name compounds, balance equations, and things of that nature. Now the next step, next thing we're going to do is a little bit of stoichiometry. Remember, stoichiometry is the math of a balanced equation. So we're always going to start with a balanced equation when we do our stoichiometry. So number seven, we start out a little easy. It says some antacid tablets contain aluminum hydroxide. The aluminum hydroxide reacts with stomach acid according to this equation. Balance the equation to determine the moles of acid neutralized if a tablet contains 0.2 moles of aluminum hydroxide. What's the first thing we do? That's right, we balance the equation. So, um, I'm going to look at this quickly. Do you see how there are three hydroxides here? And we're going to make water, H-O-H. That means we need three H's to bond to that, those three O-H's. And we'll make three waters. So I think that balances us. Aluminum, aluminum. We have six hydrogens here. Three plus three more is six. Three oxygens. Yeah, we're all set. So my equation's balanced. Then always start with what I give you. 
I'm giving you 0 0.200 moles of aluminum hydroxide. Okay, now, sometimes we'll begin with grams, but in this case we begin with moles. So if I give you moles, we just go from moles of what we know. So notice I'm putting it on the bottom, so moles of aluminum hydroxide divide out into moles of what I'm after. And I'm into moles of acid. So my acid is my hydrochloric acid up there, HCl. And the mole ratio is 1 to 3. Remember, we get the mole ratio from the, from the coefficients in the balanced equation. One aluminum hydroxide needs three hydrochloric acids. One to three. So moles of aluminum hydroxide divide out, and I'm in moles of HCl, which is what I want to know. So let's just do the math. 0.2 times 3 is 0 0.600 moles of HCl would be required. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Watch your significant figures. I have 0 0.200 that has three sig figs, so I can have three sig figs in my answer. Okay, number eight, we'll step it up a little bit. Um, here we have, oh, there's a typo here. This should be sulfur trioxide. So, where is this? Not die. So change that, please, on your practice sheet to sulfur trioxide and water. Make sulfuric acid. So this is a non-metal oxide in water forming an oxy acid. This is a type of synthesis reaction, by the way. So some of the sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere, and that comes oftentimes by, by burning coal that's not completely clean, um, is converted to sulfuric acid. And we have a dilute solution of acid rain, according to this equation below. So let's balance the equation, and then we'll determine the mass of sulfuric acid formed from 320 grams of sulfur trioxide. So, if you take a look at this equation, it's perfect. One sulfur, one sulfur. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens. Three plus one is four oxygens, and four oxygens. That's balanced as it stands. So we don't need to do anything else. So let's start with what I give you. 320.0 grams of sulfur trioxide. Now this time, we're going to need to go from grams of sulfur trioxide into moles of sulfur trioxide. We'll put a 1 by mole, and we get our grams from the periodic table. We're going to need a calculator out here as well. So I'll turn this on, and we'll get it ready to go. And let's see. Sulfur is uh, 32.07. So I'll plug that in, 32.07. Plus, we have three oxygens, and each oxygen is 16.00. So we're going to add three oxygens to that weight. So I'll use my parentheses key. 3 times 16.00 gives us a weight of 80.07 grams per mole. Okay, so grams of sulfur trioxide are gone and we're in moles of sulfur trioxide. Now we want to know the mass of sulfuric acid, don't we? So let's go from moles of sulfur trioxide, what I was just in, into moles of sulfuric acid. Do you remember where the mole ratio comes from? That's right, it's the balanced equation. So one sulfuric acid requires one sulfur trioxide. It's a one to one ratio. All right, and I want to know the mass. So we need to go from moles of sulfuric acid, H2SO4, into grams of sulfuric acid. Put a one by mole. And let's see, there are two hydrogens in sulfuric acid. They each weigh 1.01. .01. Okay, we're going to add to that the mass of the sulfur, which we just looked up, which was 32.07. And then we're going to add to that the weight of four oxygens, which each weigh 16. And we end up with 98.09 grams per mole. Okay, so moles of sulfuric acid divide out, and I'm in grams of sulfuric acid. So let's plug and chug. Pull out our calculator here. We'll clear this real quick. And let's see, we have 320 uh, divided by 80.07. It's on the bottom, kiddos, so we divide by it. Uh, we don't need to multiply and divide by 1, and then we'll multiply by 98.09. And let's see what we get. 392.0. 
So 392.0. That looks about right. I have four sig figs in my answer. I have four sig figs here, here, and here. Yeah, I'm okay with four sig figs in my answer. Okay, now be prepared to do some stoichiometry like that for the exam. Now we're going to stop part one of our review right here. We'll continue on with uh, number nine next. It's a limiting reactant problem, and I'll review how to do that for you coming up soon. See you in a sec. Bye-bye.